Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Squarespace. Today on Variant, I go through the entire Flash Rebirth story. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I can't wait to see what Flash's costume is going to look like in the DC Cinematic Slash Extended Universe. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Since the mid-season 2 premiere of The Flash was last night, of course I had to do a Flash-themed episode to welcome back the season. And it's been a while since I've done a pull list episode, which is where I run through entire storylines in a comic book. So today I chose to talk about one of the best Flash storylines of all time, which also contains one of the best DC villains slash Flash villains of all time, Reverse Flash. At least in my opinion. In any case, Flash Rebirth, let's talk about it. Flash Rebirth is written by the awesome Jeff Johns and drawn by the amazing artist Ethan Vinskyver. It's a six issue miniseries that debuted in April of 2009 and since then has been collected in trade paperback form. It's one of my all time favorite Flash stories and you guys are about to find out why. Prior to Flash Rebirth, Barry Allen returned during the events of Final Crisis. Flash Rebirth focuses on Barry's return after being dead in the comics for several years. Flash Rebirth begins with two forensic scientists in Central City who are killed by a mysterious man wielding a spear with a lightning bolt shaped tip. He rearranges containers of chemicals on the shelves and using the spear as a lightning rod recreates the accident that gave Barry Allen his flash powers. The mysterious man then escapes before the police can catch him. When reading the comic you can tell that the mysterious man or figure is responsible for Barry Allen's death. We then see that Barry is visiting the Flash Museum trying to catch up with events that occurred during the time that he was dead. He then meets up with Hal Jordan aka Green Lantern. Barry tells Hal that he feels he was not supposed to come back and that the Speed Force is trying to draw him back in, and tells Hal that he will not attend the festivities in his honor and runs off. As the Scarlet Speedster is doing what he does best, which of course is running, the evil Speedster Savitar materializes out of the lightning symbol on Barry's chest. As soon as Barry catches Savitar, he receives some electric charge from Savitar's energy and the villain crumbles into dust. Jordan quarantines Savitar's remains once he arrives on the scene, and Barry hurries home to talk to Wally about the deceased villain. In a flashback, it is revealed that even after the death of his father in prison, Barry can continued investigating his mother's murder and hoped to prove his father's innocence. Which we also see in the CW Flash series, minus his father being dead because his father is still alive in the CW Flash series. Barry and Wally then investigate a mysterious lightning storm in Fallville, Iowa and discover the remains of Black Flash. The pair are attacked by Lady Flash, but she disintegrates in the same fashion as Savitar when Barry touches her. Which of course means there must be a connection here, and of course there is. Barry's costume begins to transform into that of the Black Flash, because Barry has become the Black Flash also known as the Grim Reaper to the Speedsters. At the Justice Society's headquarters, Jesse Chambers is thinking while looking at a statue of her parents, Johnny Quick and Liberty Bell. Her husband Rick Taylor meets her there, but an explosion occurs in front of them, and an image of Johnny Quick materializes, begging Barry Allen not to hurt Jesse, and then vanishes. In Fallville, the Justice League, among other heroes, have built a containment chamber for Barry, whose personal energy field has become tainted with a black aura that burns through the Speed Force. The heroes plan to disconnect Barry from the Speed Force to save his life. Iris acts as Barry's lightning rod, so to speak, to prevent him from being reabsorbed into the Speed Force. However, after remembering their first date, Barry's energy field overloads and destroys the chamber. Green Lantern creates a new chamber with his ring and carries Barry away from the other Flashes. But Barry breaks out. He plans to run back into the Speed Force to spare his friends and family. But Superman attempts to stop him. And as they run side by side, Superman says, I've raced you before, Barry, and I've won some of those races. Barry simply responds like an OG with those were for charity, Clark, and blasts the head of Superman running into the Speed Force. Awesome. I know. As Barry re-enters the Speed Force, the Black Flash energy burns off and he sees past the events of his life, but begins to lose his memories and his individuality. With help from a mysterious voice, Barry regains his memories and fully enters the Speed Force. Barry discovers Max Mercury and Johnny Quick, who are imprisoned in the Speed Force. Johnny grabs Barry's wrist and pleads with him not to let the Force hurt Jesse, and Barry's energy kills Johnny. Max then tells Barry that he is not responsible for the deaths of the Speedsters. At which point, the true villain reveals himself, Professor Zoom or Reverse Flash. When Barry questions questions Zoom's return, the villain says that he will be resurrected in a near future event, as Zoom's corpse is still buried in the present. As Zoom beats the crap out of Barry and Max Mercury, he reveals that the red energy field is a negative speed force, created by Thon's kinetic energy and is poisoning the normal speed force. Zoom then tells his plan. After Barry briefly returned to aid Kid Flash against Superboy Prime during the Infinite Crisis event, Zoom sent a subliminal pulse into the speed force to draw back the remains of Barry's self-awareness, which led to Barry's reappearance 
experience during Final Crisis. Zoom then transformed himself into a new kind of speedster, the mysterious murderer seen at the beginning of the story, and created his negative speed force to contaminate Barry and the other heroic speedsters. Basically, Zoom brought back Barry to contaminate him with negative energy. He wanted to make Barry a weapon against his own family, and kill off all his fellow speedsters with just one touch. That way he would live his last days in guilt, and go down in history as a monster and not as a martyr as he previously did. After saying all this, Zoom then just fades away. In Fallville, Wally decides to enter the Speed Force to retrieve his uncle. As Wally goes deeper into the Speed Force, Max Mercury tells Barry that it was Alan who created all the speedsters' source of power, the Speed Force. Barry unknowingly created the Speed Force using kinetic energy throughout his career. And I've said it before, this is one of the many reasons why Barry Allen is my favorite Flash, because he created the frickin' Speed Force! Wally eventually manages to reach Barry and Max, and the three begin their escape. As the heroic speedsters are recharged with energy, Barry, Wally, Jay, Max, and Bart charge towards Zoom. Eventually, all the speedsters team up against Zoom, but despite being outnumbered, Zoom pulls Barry away and reveals that every horrible event that happened to Barry's life, from being pushed down the stairs at school, to the murder of Barry's mother and framing of his father, was all Zoom. He continues to say that he's going to take Barry's wife Iris away from him in every way, before they ever got married, before they even dated, and that Barry will forget her completely. All I have to say is Zoom is a true supervillain. I mean, that is just absolutely horrible. Barry chases after after Zoom and is joined by Wally, who tells Barry to push as hard as he can to break the time barrier. Doing so, they reach Thon and become the lightning bolt that turns Barry into the Flash and stop Thon from killing Iris. As the two Flashes push Zoom back through time to the present, they see that the Justice League, the Justice Society, and the Outsiders have built a device specifically for Thon. Barry tosses him in and activates the device, severing his connection to the negative speed force. He's then put in Iron Heights, where Hunter Zolomon talks to Thon, hoping they can work together someday. With the threat ended, everyone celebrates by welcoming Barry back and the speedsters in general. Later, Barry closes the case on his mother's death and opts to take all the other cold cases they had after his death. And at the very end of the book, Barry spends time with Iris before racing to Washington to celebrate his return with the Justice League, apologizing for being late. And that, my friends, is my summary of Flash Rebirth, but you guys should still read the storyline to get the full effect. Plus, there was some stuff I left out. I pretty much hit all the main points of the story, but there is some other cool things in the book. Anyway, let me know what other pull list episodes you guys would like to see in the future. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Their sites look professionally designed regardless of skill level, and there's no coding required. They have intuitive and easy-to-use tools, and you get a free domain if you sign up for a year. Start building your website today at squarespace.com and enter the code variant at checkout to get 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Go make an awesome website and get 10% off. First up for Wednesday, January 20th, we have Captain Marvel Issue 1. The Captain has made her return. It's a bold new frontier for Carol Danvers as she soars to new heights in her greatest mission yet. Now we have Poison Ivy Cycle of Life and Death Issue 1. This is a mini-series that seems really interesting as one of Ivy's fellow scientists is murdered. So it seems like this could be a really cool murder mystery. And finally, we have Batman issue 48. Mr. Bloom's seeds have grown into an army that may turn all of Gotham City against its new Batman. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne meets a mysterious stranger who could start a chain of events no one could stop. And that, my friends, brings yet another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or this face on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. It's a six issue mini series that, de that debuted a spear with a lightning bolt shake, shake tip. <laughs>